In this video, I'm going to be building these fully custom LED taillights for my E39 BMW. And then I'm going to tell you why I probably wouldn't recommend doing the same. I know about 90% of people watching this video will just be watching it for entertainment, so I've put the technical details of this step in the description for people who do want to take on this kind of project themselves, but here are the basics. I'm using 4.8mm LEDs arranged in sets of 3, with the LEDs inside the sets wired in series, but all the sets are linked in parallel. Each set of three has its own resistor in order to keep the voltage at the right level, so for example if the module has 30 LEDs, there will be 10 resistors on the board. These then join up to a common ground, meaning the whole module is just powered using the existing taillight electronics with only a positive and negative cable to deal with. As you'll see in this comparison of the first module I built versus the last, my wiring technique got a lot neater and more compact as I went along. A couple days later I'd finally finished printing, assembling and testing all the module boards, so it was time to get the housing ready for reassembly. I started by sanding all the rough edges away where I had to cut the lens off from the housing itself. Then I masked off the fog light section to keep the reflective coating on the surface as this was the only section of the light I wasn't replacing with LEDs. Because of the way I'm mounting the LEDs, they won't benefit from any of the reflective surfaces, so I'm painting the inside of the housing black. This also gives the lens a darker red appearance, which I really like. I'm using Duplicolor trim and bumper paint for this, because it has a really nice surface finish and it also bonds without primer. While that was drying, I went and sanded back the old tint coating on the lens to get it ready for resealing with clear coat and installation. To fix the LED modules inside the housing, I'm using a combination of glue for strength and silicon for vibration absorption. To seal the lens I'm using that same silicon but just in a much greater quantity. To get it seated in place I did this first lap around the edge, put it in place and let it dry and then filled in the gaps with the lens shut. To get everything connected I'm just wiring the LED modules to their corresponding source on the metal plate behind the housing which means I can keep using the factory plug. But to get them to bond, I had to drill holes in the plate to expose raw metal for the wires to solder to, as the galvanized coating of the plate rejects solder connections if you leave it as is. The lens can then be painted black around the perimeter just to hide any roughness from cutting it open.
Well, I'm a little apprehensive about this last step because clear coating this lens is the last step other than installing them. And if it doesn't work, I'm a bit up the creek. These lights have been so much more work than I expected and they seem like they're going to be worth it, but I hope this doesn't ruin it. Touch wood. there we are about 80 hours of work later these are finally done and I'm really happy with the result well at least I was until they started failing four of these bulbs are already burning out and failing on me I don't know what it is I don't know if it's a loose connection these are not really serviceable due to the way I built them with the silicon and the LEDs being glued in I tried really hard to be really precise and meticulous building these but they are already failing so that is one of the shortcomings of these. Second problem I'm having with these is that the lenses are now full of tiny little stress fractures from opening them up. These are fused together from the factory and not with the sealant that can be heated up and sort of melted apart. And the problem with doing that is it puts a lot of stress into this 20 year old plastic that's kind of brittle now. And as careful as I was, there are still little fractures all the way through making these look a little bit ugly. BMWs of this era check every bulb constantly. Every 20 seconds or something, they'll send a flash out. And that's another problem I'm having with these is they just constantly flash while I'm driving down the road, my reverse lights will be flashing. It's just, I'm just asking to get pulled over at this point. Now you can't fix that without coding, but to fix the errors, you can at least put load resistors on, which make the computer think there's a normal bulb in there and it stops putting all those warnings on your dash. I completely underestimated how hot those load resistors get. Because I have eight in the boot, it is honestly a fire hazard at night. These things get insanely warm. I'll show you a little clip right now. It just isn't worth it. Now I can pay someone to code out both the errors and the flashes, which means I wouldn't need the low resistors, but then I have to pay somebody to still have lights that are already burning out and have cracks all the way through the surface. I don't think that's worth it. and. As much as I hate to say it, after all this work, I'm probably going to have to just go and buy some new lights. Now, the whole reason I did this in the beginning was because I needed to take apart the light and try and reseal it because it kept leaking. I know people will probably get triggered that I opened up and ruined a set of Hella OEM taillights, but they weren't in good enough condition to use. I was just trying to fix them and upgrade them reasonably cheaply. This was kind of a proof of concept, if anything. This is something I would definitely do again on another car with lights that can be opened with heat and not cutting because that changes the game completely. It's way cleaner, puts the lights through a lot less stress. E39, probably wouldn't bother. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. I'll see you soon. Cheers.